Hi, it's me again, Ray, with another podcast episode. Sorry about the wind. I normally have seagulls as my background kind of uh, interference. This time it's the wind. Uh, we've had wind and lashing rain down here on the south coast. I'm not far from Brighton, so uh, we're okay flood-wise, fortunately, but there's poor people in some places in the country. Dreadful. At the moment, all we've got is wind. So sorry about the background noise. Now, have you heard people say, Oh, well, I suppose that's progress for you. That's normally a sarcastic comment about something that's that's been changed. It worked for decades. There was nothing wrong with it. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, that sort of thing. And it's normally the new thing, the new idea, the new item or whatever is nowhere near as good as it used to be with the old system or whatever it was. So that's progress for you. The first thing that comes to mind, this is my favourite. <laughs> I love this one. Buses. Diesel buses in cities. They're churning out smelly fumes. They're noisy. They stink. They're horrible. They pump out pollution. And there are loads of buses, obviously, as you know, in cities. So what are people saying? Let's have electric buses. Ooh, wow. Revolutionary idea. That's fantastic. Electric buses. How incredible. What a thought. Why didn't we think of that before? We did think of it before. We had electric buses over 70 years ago in the cities. I remember as a kid travelling on the trolley buses. Now that's not trams. Trams go on rails in the road. These were buses with wheels obviously and tyres and a steering wheel and a driver. Okay, they were just like ordinary buses but they were electric and they got their electricity from the, the wires overhead, you know, the, the pantograph thing, like trains. And they were silent. I remember as a kid riding on them. They were quiet. They didn't pump out diesel pollution. And of course, everyone thought, oh no, we'll get rid of those. We don't want electric buses, we'll go diesel. <laughs> now, all this time later, oh, wow, there's an idea. Look, let's have electric buses, shall we? When you think about it, I mean, it's mental, isn't it? They say what goes round comes round. I mean, it's absolutely balmy when you think about it. How about this? Everyone had a fireplace. They had a fireplace in the lounge, the dining room, even the bedrooms. Or oh, rip those out. Let's rip the fireplaces out. A few decades later, everyone's putting fireplaces back. Do you remember that? All the fireplaces went back in. And the, the, do you remember the, bar, the old sinks, um, the, the kitchen sink? Those old, I think they were stone, like farmhouse style sinks, weren't they, they called them? Um, sort of big square deep thing. Everyone ripped those out. What they did was put them in the garden, grow flowers in them, <laughs> which looked awful. Or they took them out the tip. Now you look online square stone type farmhouse sinks for sale they cost a fortune people want to put them back so again you know we're, we're going round aren't we in circles and the bath is another thing i saw an advert recently about a standalone bath you know you, you don't have the side panels or anything like that this bath you just sort of plonk it in the middle of the floor in the bathroom and that's the latest modern thing no it's not that's what they had originally that's what they had if you go back decades and decades they had these standalone baths that, see again what goes round comes round floorboards what, what's the modern thing now oh let's uh, rip up the carpets hire a sanding machine sand the floorboards varnish them okay and perhaps just have a rug in the middle look at that wow look you can see the floorboards you know what i'm going to say don't you it's exactly what they had years ago <laughs> decades ago probably a hundred years ago or more you could see the floorboards. You have a, a rug or a carpet in the middle. Floorboards all showing around the outsides. Madness, really, because you think someone would say, hang on a minute, there's a pattern here. So before, for example, before we do away with the electric trolley buses, let's have a think. Are, are we going to say in a few decades time, oh, let's go for electric buses because diesel stinks. <laughs> it only wanted someone to say that. And it would have saved a lot of, well, a lot of pollution, wouldn't it? A hundred years ago, people had a pine kitchen table. You remember those, the old pine table? They'd scrub them, you know, with their, their hot water and their bars of that weird soap, you know, that red stuff. <laughs> or carbolic soap or whatever it was. Then everyone chucked those out. We don't want old pine tables. We'll have formica. So everyone had formica tables. Do you remember formica? I mean, they looked good. They were easier to clean and all that sort of thing. So what happened then? <laughs> what happened then? Oh, let's have pine table. Wouldn't that look nice in the kitchen? A solid pine table. That would look nice. Chuck that formica out. Same thing there. I mean, I can go on and on. 
is another good one. I do like this one. They're talking about, recently, they're talking about recycling and waste, all that sort of thing. Bottles, cans, what can we do with them? Because people are just going to sling them in the bin, even if it's the recycle bin. What can we do? I know, let's do a refund system. You take your can or your bottle or whatever back to the shop and they'll give you a refund on it. Brilliant idea. That is a revolutionary idea. No, it's not. When I was a kid, our ties of bottles, we take back to the shop and they give us threepence. Do you remember threepence? Probably not. We had refundable bottles and things then. Another thing I noticed over the years, pubs used to sell bitter or lager. Do you remember that when lager came in? What are they all doing now? They've all got real ales. They've got special real ales. Well, that's what they had years ago. Real ales in pubs. Shopping delivered to your door. Now that is a good, all the supermarkets now. This is a revolutionary idea. We will deliver your order to your door. How about that? Yeah, they did that in the 50s. I remember as a kid, I remember the greengrocer man. He'd turn up, my mum would go out to the van. She'd say, oh, I'll have that cabbage. I'll have some of those carrots, blah, blah, blah. Perfect. And uh, if you'd go over to the greengrocer shop. Yep, I'll have, uh, I'll have those plums, please. I'll have a few plums. What did he do with them? He put them in a paper bag. Remember, he'd roll the bag around, twist the corners, and he'd hand them over the counter. Now they're saying, oh, we've got plastic packaging. We've got plums in a plastic tray with plastic netting over the top. How about using paper bags? Yeah, yeah, we did that when I was a kid. We did that back in the 50s and the 30s and the 20s and way back. Again, oh, that's an idea. Let's use paper bags. It's probably not a good idea at this time to mention floodplains, what with the dreadful flooding that some people have had to endure and are still enduring. But I heard on the news the other day, is it the Department of the Environment or the Environmental Agency, whatever they call themselves, they're saying, how about this idea? Let's not build on floodplains. Oh, there's an idea for you. Yes, don't build on floodplains. Do you know when I was a kid, there was a huge plot of land called 77 acres. It was called that because there was a big notice up for oh, development, blah, 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 housing estate, 77 acres. We used to play on our bikes. They were up, ride up and down the hills and mess around over there. Ran right the way alongside the railway line. Brilliant, 77 acres. So what did they do? They built this huge housing estate on 77 acres of land. And I can't remember when exactly, but a few years later, it flooded. The roads were flooded and people were saying, oh, these houses, I hope they're not sinking. I hope the foundations are all right. They, you know, the foundations. I don't think the floods went into the houses, but all sort of around them. The roads were flooded. And of course, they say, oh dear, this won't do the foundations any good of these houses. People are saying, how strange that should flood. It's a new housing estate. Strange. It was a huge field, right? And they covered it in concrete. Then they said, oh, look, there's nowhere for the rain to go. Oh, look, it's all flooding. <laughs> good grief. Too much parking on the streets, too many cars. Well, we know that. So what do people say? Concrete over your front garden, okay? Take your fence down, concrete your front garden over and park your cars there. So you've got an off-road sort of parking area. Great idea. So everyone did that. They all concreted over their front gardens. <laughs> they parked their cars there. That didn't really help because cars parked then on the driveways and in the road. So you've got double the amount of cars in. And now they're saying, can you have a little border each side of your kind of driveway? You know, can you have some bare earth, perhaps with a few plants and bushes and shrubs and things, somewhere for the water to go when it pours with rain? See, that's another thing, isn't it? Cover everything with concrete, and where's the water going to go? So the, the brilliant idea of off-road parking, now they're saying, well, hang on, uh, dig up some of the concrete because the roads are flooding. All the hedgerows out in the country get rid of hedgerows, we don't want hedgerows, right? Chop that lot down. Then suddenly, oh, hang on a minute, there's nowhere for the wildlife to grow. Tell you what, let's have a program of hedgerow planting. Let's all bring hedgerows back. You know, that's another, I know that might be a silly thing or a minor thing, but to the wildlife, that's important, isn't it? You know, we took all their hedgerows away to make more land for crops and stuff. But then there's nowhere for the wildlife. Fences. Let's all have new fences, concrete fence posts, concrete gravel boards, okay, seal it all. 
oh, hang on, hedgehogs can't get in and out and they're in decline. Tell you what, all make holes in your new fences. <laughs> well, the fences we took down had holes in. That's why we took them down. So you're now saying put up your new fence and make a hole in it. Or several holes, preferably. I don't know, it's funny, isn't it? It's funny how how these things, all the brilliant new ideas we had years ago. Oh, we need to see policemen on the street. We need bobbies on the street. We need more police stations. When I was a kid, you had your coppers going around on bicycles. And there was a police station in villages. You'd have your little police station. It was only a house, a police house. Very often, the policemen lived there. You had your sort of counter area where people could go in. He had his telephone. It was brilliant. Any problems, you could go to your local police station. What are they saying now? What we need is more police stations. We need policemen on the street. We had all that. We had policemen on the streets. We had all the police stations. The high street is dead or it's dying. The high street is in decline. How can we rejuvenate the high street? Let's bring the high street back to life. Well, we killed the high street by having out of town shopping centres, retail parks or whatever glamorous name they gave them at the time. Basically now, everyone goes out of town to supermarkets and these other big stores. So the high street, <laughs> all that's left, are, what, well, what's left? Charity shops, coffee shops. There used to be estate agents. I think they've all gone because they're online now. So now they're saying, let's rejuvenate the high street. Let's bring back some life to the high street. It's too late. How can you do that? Unless you bring the shops back. I mean, the local greengrocer, well, he's gone, isn't he? He can't compete with the supermarket. Your local butcher, mind you, there are a few butchers around if you have a look, and there are one or two greengrocers, but nothing like it used to be. Shoe shops, there used to be half a dozen or more shoe shops in my hometown. Well, they've all gone, because this huge one opened up the road out of town, this huge shoe shop. I think they went bankrupt or something happened in the end, so they've gone, so now there's no shoe shops. You can't buy shoes. Well, you can. You can buy them online. <laughs> so again, killing off the high street. Uh, really, we've killed off the high street. Do you know, you could close down a supermarket within a few days. I mean, it would never happen, obviously. But if everyone in a town said, right, we're not going to go anymore to Blog's supermarket. And no one went there. They opened their doors. <laughs> you know, no, not one customer. No customers at all. Well, it would only be a few days. They'd have to clear their stock out of the perishable stuff and they closed out, wouldn't they? So it can be done. I mean, not that that would happen. I remember people saying that about the tax disc on cars, you know, people moaning about the state of the roads and all this. Oh, well, if we don't pay our tax, of course, you're not going to get everyone to say, right, we won't pay tax. It doesn't work that way, the, the road tax, you know. One other thing that you probably don't remember because this is going back before my time, I think, yeah, just about before my time. You know, they've been digging up the pavements over the last, what, 20, 30 years or so, laying in cables for phones, broadband, TV, all this stuff. They dig up all the pavements, put all the cabling in. Do you know what they had? <laughs> you won't believe this. I think it must have been in the 40s, uh, certainly in the 40s and 50s, yeah. They had cable going from house to house. Listen to that wind out there. Cable going from house to house which was radio. Each house had a speaker, I think you rented it, a loudspeaker on the wall with like a, a switch, four-way switch or whatever it was, BBC Home Service, third programme, light programme, and you could switch to different radio stations. And that was cable to the houses. It wasn't a radio, it was purely some sort of cable system. Of course then, oh well we don't want cable going to each house, rip all that lot down, and, <laughs> and then decades later Hey, let's have cable go to each house. Now, there's a thought. Seagulls. Ah, seagulls have come back. I don't know where they've been. Because we import a lot of stuff from Europe and worldwide, uh, a lot of food like apples, um, carrots. You know, when I go to a supermarket, I'll have a look on there and you've got like runner beans or whatever, you know, imported from Kenya. Well, can't we grow our own runner beans? It's a bit odd carrots from Spain and all this stuff because what they're saying now with, with this EU and this Brexit business they're saying should we grow our own apples well we used to we used to grow our own carrots our own everything how about if we grow our own apples there's an idea good grief I mean again we're, we're going back I think the old tried and tested methods are the best aren't they 
you know, the way things were. Do you remember Dr. Beeching closed down all the branch lines? I mean, I do see the point there. If you're running a rail service into a village, you've got the, as they had at the time, the steam engine, the track, the staff, you know, the crossing gates, the signalman, the station staff, the driver, all this stuff. And if you're taking like three passengers a week uh, on the line, it's really not worth running the line. I do understand that. But what are they saying now? I don't know whether you've heard this. What are they saying on the telly now? They're going to reopen some of the branch lines. Not all of them, admittedly, but they're going to reopen some. So again, full circle. Here's another one. I won't bore you too much more. I'll let you have some peace. Here's another one. In the old days, we all had a record player. We'd go and buy records, vinyl as it's now called. And we, we all loved our records. The sleeves had pictures on, you know, the albums they had lovely pictures on, lovely graphics and all this stuff. Along came CDs. Oh, we don't want records, all that old fashioned stuff. Get rid of all that. Chuck your record player out. What's happening? There's a vinyl comeback. <laughs> Again, what goes round comes round. Everyone's buying records. They're all digging out their old record players. Those who didn't chuck them away, those who put them up in the loft, they're bringing them down, dusting them off. Oh, look, let's play some records. There's the seagulls again. So, yes, it's um, it's all good fun, isn't it, when you look at it the, the way I have been, the, the sort of full circle thing. There we are. I don't know what those seagulls are doing. They probably want something to eat. Right, I'm going to disappear. Thanks for listening and uh, I shall see you next time. Take care. Bye bye for now.